Ladies and gentlemen, today is May 31st, 2017, and this is the Ken Kale Show, episode 340, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Ken Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you back from a week off. I did visit Phoenix Comic Con last week, that's why I was gone. And But today we are getting back into it. We're going to be talking about thick skin for artists and how you can become confident, or rather, giving a little bit of a talk today on the three steps that you are going to go through, three phases that you're going to go through as an artist. Because there was something interesting, and by the way, we're going to be featuring For Honor. This is my character, uh, Tankana, based on my WoW Undead Warrior, if you couldn't tell. Uh, so we're going to be drawing her today, and we're going to be giving a little bit of a talk. A little bit of a talk. And it's specifically regarding thick skin, and how you are going to evolve as an artist, and specifically dealing with opinions, with feedback, how to deal with that, how to properly defend yourself, and how you can become a good, confident, professional artist and go on and live a happy life. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I mean, of course I'm gonna be doing some live drawing today because you guys have been loving the live drawing. So I'm gonna be sketching along and trying to give this talk while simultaneously educating, entertaining, doing all that stuff at the same time. So let's go ahead and get into it. So uh, based upon what I taught you guys last week, you can see that we already have an, a non-blank canvas because we know that this is the scariest thing known to man or known to artist man or woman. Okay, so put that on, get some references on there, get, get some company. I like to think about it like inviting people to the party. And that way you don't have a blank canvas anymore. And then immediately you can easily start sketching in what you want to do. So I already have a general idea of what I want to do here. And that is that I want to sketch Tankana, or rather this Viking girl that represents Tankana, uh, on one side. And then I want Tankana in her human form, basically with the mask off on the other side. So you can see that I'm e immediately starting to lay down some lines, some flow lines, getting some flow lines for the way that I want this piece to look. Okay, now let's go ahead and while I sketch this, I mean, you guys can see what I'm doing, obviously. So let's go ahead and get into the talk, thick skin. And I'd like to present phase one. And I like to call this the hermit crab, the hermit crab. Now, this is an interesting point of conversation because I noticed something very interesting after attending the con. After attending Phoenix Comic Con, I realized something very interesting. And that is that I met a lot of you in person, a lot of artists in person. By the way, everyone that I met in person, thank you so much for stopping by the booth and buying prints and saying hello and all that stuff. Really means a lot, all the nice words that you guys say, as well as good suggestions for the show. Really means a lot. Um, but there was one thing in common that I noticed with all of you, and that was I said, well, that's so awesome of you to meet me in person. Have you, I'm sure I've seen your work before because if you have, you know, if you have the guts to come up and talk to someone face to face, you know, let alone me, not saying that I'm like super famous or anything, but like if you guys have the guts to come up and talk to me, then you must be posting your art online. You must be posting on the Facebook. So tell me where I can find it or show me some of your art. And many of you said something that was very disturbing. And that was that you hadn't posted anything. You had not posted a single thing. And I'm already sketching a little bit too much. I need to keep this a little bit more light, a little bit more light and fun. There we go. Oh, I like that. I like that. Now, Tankana needs to have she's a little bit more burly, right? She's, she's muscly. That's why I like this Viking woman over here. So we got to make sure we're following suit with that. But yeah, you guys said that you're not posting anything. And that really alarmed me. That really alarmed me. And I'll tell you why. You want to know why that alarmed me? Well, this is the reason why. Because you guys are wanting to become professional artists, right? You're wanting to get to the point where you can be confident with your work. And of course, you know, no one's ever perfectly confident. We all have our insecurities. We all, we all have our weaknesses. But the point is, is that you want to begin sooner than later discovering those weaknesses. You want to sooner than later become accustomed to your weaknesses and understand the patterns that they follow. Understand that there's always gonna be patterns. Okay, that's a pretty good one. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. We're gonna do another one because you guys know me. I always like to start small. I started a little bit kind of large on that one. I wanna to try to draw one super small, see if we can get a more interesting uh, composition. So pay attention to this tiny little space right here. I'm gonna sketch something right in there. And, um, and I don't blame you. I don't blame you guys for not posting anything. I don't blame you guys for being scared of being ridiculed or criticized or being told that your artwork sucks. You know, those are all terrible things that we want to avoid. We want to, we want to wait for that point where we 
feel within ourselves that we're truly a success before we begin posting online. And I get that, I totally understand that. And that's happened to me, not just with my art, but in a lot of other facets of my life, career-wise. Uh, you know, there was a point where I was completely broke and I was living in my friend's mom's office. And I remember when I left that place, I didn't wanna see that family again until I had become a success, right? And guess what happened? I waited for years before I talked to them. I waited for years before I talked to them. And then finally, when I had felt like I had made something on myself, then I called them back. And you know what they, their response was? They were very sad. They were sad that I hadn't kept in contact with them. And, and I think that the reason was, or I guess the lesson that I took from that is that you shouldn't wait. You shouldn't be waiting until that point where you think that you are good enough because oftentimes you are good enough for people. You are good enough for your friends. You're good enough to just get started. You're good enough to be putting your stuff out there and you need to be ready to take on the criticism that's going to follow. Now, there are going to be two types of criticism. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's about the most obvious thing anyone's ever stated. We're gonna have positive and negative criticism. I'm still sketching too complicated. I'm, I'm still keeping this too complicated. Do you notice how this is still really stiff? I'm gonna try one more and then we're gonna start refining. That, it's not bad, it's not bad, it's good. But I wanna show you guys, actually there was a really awesome feeling that I had the last over the last few weeks. And that is that I feel like, oh man, oh that character that I drew, that concept that I drew, I could do way better if I just had more time. Oh, that was the first sketch. Man, people are seeing all the mistakes that I'm doing and you know, they're seeing that my first drawing isn't perfect, you know? And I realized, at first I felt like it was a bad thing, but then I realized, wait, everyone's seeing that my first drawing is never perfect. Everyone's seeing all the mistakes that I make. Everyone is seeing uh, you know, all the things that I'm not terribly confident with. They're seeing me stutter. They're seeing me make mistakes. Oh, this is already looking way better, way better. Oh, that's tight. Okay, I'll have, I kind of want like this tiered effect going on. So like real tank on will be maybe a little lower and then the armored version will be like up and kind of like scary looking. Yeah, that's gonna be really cool. That's gonna be really cool. In fact, yeah, let's have this other head like pointing down. Maybe like her hair kind of covering part of her body there. And let's have something like that. Yes, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so, but like I was saying, going back to the story. Um, ooh, I like that little kind of happy accident right there. See those little horns? I guess we could turn her into Ari or something, or maybe she could be wearing some sort of headdress. I don't know. We'll see what we can do with that. But this already feels, oh, so much better. So much better. Ooh, man, that's hot. That is hot. We're gonna roll with that. We gonna roll with that. Ha <laughs> ha, very good. Million times better. Okay, so let's go ahead and control copy that, delete it. Put it over here. Let's go ahead and size it up a little bit. And now we can finally lower the resolution and we can do a little bit more measurements. Measurements, ladies and gentlemen. So see, three sketches, I finally get that flow, I get that feeling that I'm looking for. And now we can go in with our second layer. Okay, so uh, going back to the story. Going back to the story. I realized that I was waiting too long. I was waiting too long and I made a terrible mistake by not keeping in contact, and this is relatable to artists, by saying that if you wait too long to start showing your work, you're just not gonna be getting the feedback. You're not gonna be getting the exposure. You're not gonna be getting, you're not gonna be building thick skin, right? That's the most important, that is the message of today, is building thick skin. And I wanna tell you guys why that's going to help you so much. And no matter what level you're at, you should be showing your art to everybody that you possibly can. Um, so let's talk about that, thick skin. So stage one, <laughs> the hermit crab, okay? Hermit crab, you are in the shell. You don't want anybody to see what's going on. Your skin is thinner than the membrane of the Metroid, okay? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you get what I'm saying. It's like, a, you're like a jellyfish, okay? You don't have any, any defense whatsoever versus words, sticks and stones are going to break your bones and guess what, words are going to as well. So the best thing that you can do is 
You need to start building that resistance. You need to start understanding. You need to start understanding why people are saying the things that they are. Ooh, that looks cool already. Ooh, that looks awesome. That's awesome. It reminds me a little bit of Hollow Knight. If you guys haven't played Hollow Knight, just, in fact, I kind of want to keep that nose off for now. Just for the heck of it. Just for the heck of it. Mm. That looks really cool. And then we'll have that little chin kind of showing there. That looks good. That looks really good. Uh, Hollow Knight is really awesome. Going off on a tangent, going back to, going back to where we are. Okay, you're a hermit crab. Okay, now the first way that I've learned to start getting good, <laughs> getting good, not only at For Honor, but getting good at taking criticism is open yourself up to a lot of it. Open yourself up to a lot of it. And the first thing that I want you guys to start doing is siding immediately with the person who is criticizing you. Side immediately with them. And they're gonna say stuff like, this face sucks. This character's ugly. What the heck are these colors? Are you crazy for picking these? What were you thinking? And I want you to say to that, you know what, maybe I am crazy for picking those colors. And then you wanna ask that person, why do you feel that way? What colors, not, not even what colors would you pick? Because that's kinda of like, oh, well, you think you could do any better? And possibly they could, possibly they could. And if that person bothers to take time to teach you, then that is going to be a very, very valuable thing for you in the long run, okay? Now that is the main reason why you wanna side with people that criticize you. Because every now and then you'll get people that just wanna troll you, right? There's plenty of people that just wanna cut you down and then when you ask for help, they're just gonna leave you in the mess. They tell you you messed up and they leave you in the mess. And those people are, quite frankly, not useful at all. And therefore, you don't need to worry about them too much. But what you need to watch for is people that are going to criticize you. And then once you side with them, they're going to be like, wow, that's really awesome for you to not just jump to defending yourself or running away. Here, let me teach you something. And here's the second thing that I want to tell you is that you'll tell when you're, you can tell when you're running into a good teacher because you know that that person is actually better than you. You know that that person's skill is better than you. Be careful of be careful of taking like detailed advice from artists that are not beyond your skill level. However, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't accept criticism and opinions from people that are below you or not artists at all. Because you don't have to be an artist to be a critic. You don't have to be an artist to say that piece feels weird or I don't like that expression or the proportions seem funny, the, the body looks weird. You know, pay attention to those things and then ask yourself, why does that person feel that way? Why does that person feel that way, okay? So, learning from people that are better than you. First of all, and that requires, okay? Now this is really important. I need to look at you when I say this. That requires you to actually admit that you are not the best artist on the face of the earth and there are tons of people that are better than you, okay? And I do that every day. I still do it and I think I'll do it for the rest of my life. There's always gonna be people out there better than me. There's always gonna be people with more successful YouTube shows than me, more successful businesses, more successful everything that I can learn from. And those people are very important. If you get a chance to meet them, you wanna ask them a lot of questions. You wanna be willing to, you know, admit that they have something to teach you. Okay, so uh, let me take a break from this really quick because this is looking good. I'm digging that general sculpting that's going on there. Let's make sure I'm not missing something. Um, so you're, sca you're scared and self-conscious. You wanna prove yourself. Here's the other thing is that finally, you know, you're working on your art your whole life. This is a good example. When I went to, when I finally got my job at Riot Games, right? I've been trying to, I've been wanting to work in video games my entire life. And I, okay, hang on. I gotta focus on this part really quick because I always like to make sure that I get the stomach proper. <laughs> you gotta make sure you get the stomach proper and all the awesome abdominables. Abdominables proper. Yes, and then she's gonna have that. We actually don't need to worry too much about what's going on down here because by that point, the picture will be kind of cut off. But that looks great. Great, awesome. Okay, anyway, now that I got that out of the way, um, you're gonna wanna prove yourself. And I remember when I first started working at Riot, that was exactly my mentality. I, I needed to prove myself to everybody. It was like, yes, okay, you hired me as an artist because I had already had the portfolio and the skills and the experience 
that made you interested in having me work here, but yet I still feel like I need to prove myself. And in a way, I think that there is sort of like a rite of passage that everyone needs to go through, for sure. Um, oh man, that would be really cool to have like the arms down. Okay, I'm gonna control J this. That'd be really cool to have the arms down, kind of like this maybe, and she's like holding the ax. That could be cool. That could be pretty cool. So watch how I sketch this in, guys. Look, look at how I do this. Look, I'm not drawing the arm lines, but just kind of like, it was like, hey, here's where the hands exist. Here's where the ax could exist. And see how quickly I just lay that in? Because look, I spent like 10 seconds on that. And if I don't like it, or if I want to reposition something, I can easily go back and do that. Don't over detail your sketches, especially when you're playing around with uh, posing and all that stuff. Okay, so they're going back to what I was saying. Rite of passage. There is a rite of passage that every artist must go through, especially when you are the new guy in town. You're the new guy in town. You're the new guy at the company. Everybody's like, oh, can, ooh, who's the new kid, right? What can he do? You know, and of course you want to prove yourself. And of course, and there will be times, or there will be a time and place for that. But proving yourself is as easy as doing the job you were hired to do. Just doing the job you were hired to do and... That, I mean, that's basically it. <laughs> it's, so, it's so simple. Um, and just trust that, trust in yourself, okay? And that moves on to the second point, okay? Um, you're still gonna be a little reliant on the opinions of others. You're gonna wanna prove yourself. And eventually, you're gonna start running into a lot of feedback. You're gonna start running into a lot of feedback because once you start working professionally or anything, just as a professional artist, you're gonna be taxed with people that are telling you that like, you're not only gonna be directed, you're not only gonna be micromanaged, but you are going to be picked apart many, many times. And I say that, that this is at the, the job, but it's also gonna happen in college. I didn't actually attend college, I'm mostly self-taught, but your professors are going to be picking your work apart. Your colleagues, your friends, everybody is gonna be picking your work apart in a manner that is more critical than anyone has before. Okay. Oh, I actually like that. Let's go ahead and lay this in. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's really, that's very, very nice. Very nice. Uh, let's make sure we got those awesome bulky shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. <laughs> that is really cool. I like that. Actually, let's keep that, let's keep that side open. I like that. I like that very much. Have some more. Uh, have some of this going on there. I don't know what to do with these arms, so uh, we're just gonna have them kind of hang down to the side, I guess. Something like that. Cool. Yeah, we got some muscly ladies, people. Muscly ladies. We like that. We like the muscly ladies. All right. Um, you're gonna be, okay, okay, so you're gonna have your art picked apart so many times that eventually you're gonna start getting really annoyed and you're gonna start getting very angry and you're gonna wanna defend yourself. And this is gonna happen most of the time because more things are on the line. Before you could kinda stand up for yourself and you could have a good conversation because it's like, oh, there's nothing really on the line. My job isn't on the line. I'm not running the risk of offending somebody, offending my boss, talking back to my manager. Who would ever think to do that? I could lose everything. Everything I've worked for my entire life could go down the toilet, right? And so of course, what you do is you shut up. You shut your mouth and you don't say anything for a long, long time. And over about the course of six to eight months, maybe about a year, that is going to build up until it eventually explodes. <laughs> It is going to explode and you are going to get really angry and probably do something a little drastic. And this is what I call stage two, <laughs> P.O.'d crab. <laughs> you are now, you're no longer a hermit crab. You are now ticked off crab. Okay. You are crabby. And this is the point where you finally realize that I don't want to work in an environment where I can't defend myself. I don't want to work in an environment where I can't say, well, what's the best way to say this? And it's not, and it's usually not just about your work. It starts with your work. You start by shutting up because someone's criticizing your work and you don't want to offend them, especially because it's your manager. 
But then that it, it, it expands to all the other facets of your job. You're in a meeting where you could have said something. Um, you're in a, you have an idea. You have an idea that could possibly improve the product, but you don't say anything. You get so used to just not saying anything that eventually it becomes uh, very aggravating. And some people stay here, unfortunately. Some people just learn to stay here. And I don't know, maybe, maybe it's okay for them. Maybe they're all right with just kind of coasting along and not really ever speaking up or doing the whole thing where they're in the meeting and they're just waiting for the other person. Here's the other part is that you wanna be careful not to turn into the person that just waits for the other person to stop talking and then kind of throws out you know, some, some bigger words, right? It's like the big words that were used by the, the guy prior to you, you now wanna use bigger words, but actually nothing is getting done. Uh, and then it, basically the meeting concludes by, and you guys are going to laugh at me when I say this because this is absolutely going to happen to you. The meeting concludes with, oh, well, so-and-so is actually not here right now. So uh, let's sync up again next week when they're back in town or when they're available. They're stuck in another meeting. We need to get their approval before we move forward with this. And this is after about 30, 45 minutes of people just going back and forth, back and forth, right? And it's so aggravating. <laughs> it is so aggravating. Okay, so... Continuing with ticked off crap, you're finally gonna get to the point where you speak up and you know what's gonna happen? People are actually gonna listen to you. People are actually gonna listen to you and then you're gonna realize, oh, whoa, this entire time, I could have actually been talking. I could have actually been saying, guys, why are we even wasting time in this meeting? I think we should all just get back to our jobs. Hey, I think we should just get back to doing the product. Or hey, I'm gonna go take off back to my desk. I'm gonna get back to work because nothing's happening here. And then you leave an impression and people will respect you for that. People will respect you for being honest. Uh, and actually, and here's why. Because it's not selfish. You're not doing it in a selfish way where it's like, oh, well, my time's important. You know, I'm gonna take myself back to the job so that way I can look good. It's about product. It's about the team. It's about the company. It's about you wanting to bring the best parts of you to the thing that you're trying to create. And that takes us to, finally, stage three, which is the balanced crab. The crab with thick skin. The exoskeleton has fully, well, I guess they all have exoskeletons. But the exoskeleton has fully formed, and you are an amazing balanced armored crab with thick skin. And, but you're balanced because you're not always on the defensive. You're not always criticizing people. You're not always pushing back on people that are criticizing work just to push back. But you've learned a couple things. Remember back in the beginning where I talked about taking the side, taking the side of the person who's criticizing you. This looks good, by the way. We're gonna go ahead and duplicate that and I'm gonna sneak. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and continue with this. Now we can go ahead and jump on in there Start laying in some details of this beautiful lady. Hey there, Tankana, how you doing? How you doing, baby? Mm. I am going to actually size this up a little bit more too. So that way this looks good on the thumbnail, people. That's right, I'm planning ahead. I'm thinking about how this is gonna look on the YouTube video. That's the way I always do these now. Um, but you're gonna become balanced. You're, and this is how you become balanced. This uh, has to do with what I said before. You're finally gonna hit this mentality of where you feel like you no longer have to prove yourself. You know what you're capable of. You know what the best use of your time is. And most importantly, you have learned to place your team and the product first. Now I'm gonna say that again because it's very important that you understand this. There is gonna come a point where you no longer care about looking good necessarily Everybody likes to look good, everybody likes to look cool, right? And you're conscious of that. But when it comes time for people to criticize, when it comes time for your boss to come to you after you've been working on something for about three weeks and say, I don't like it, start over again, you can look at him dead in the face and say, all right, cool, what did you have in mind? And you can not even bat an eye because now it's no longer feeling like a personal attack. Now it's you saying, oh, this person who is the director, right? It should be the director that's telling you to start over, not just your colleague. <laughs> it should be the person who is appointed and in charge, right? Because oftentimes you'll get people saying, oh, I don't like this. Maybe you should do it over again. But they're not the art director. 
You know, you got to respect, you know, there's a reason why you choose leaders. There's a reason why there is that order in a team is because you say, hey, I want you to be the leader and I'm going to trust you. Um, <laughs> you know, and at least that's the way that I like to think about it. So, of course, uh, that's another good way that you can sort of not necessarily defend yourself because I don't want you to think about defending yourself. Um, it was something that I tried for a little while of like, okay, if someone comes up and gives me bad feedback, I'm gonna say, well, you should talk to the art director, you know? And it's like, most of the time, it doesn't even need to come down to that because most of the time, those people are just giving their opinions. And that can go back to what we learned in the very beginning is that sit down and talk with them about that. Be like, hey, thank you for being honest with me to tell me that, you know, because you gotta think about it from the feedback or the feedback giver's perspective. It's not easy to tell somebody that their work sucks. It is if they're just trying to troll you, right? But most of the time, your colleagues and your friends are not trying to do that. Uh, and that's why it's imperative that you ask them, okay, well, tell me what feeling, what, what's the feeling that you were getting from this? What do you think is causing that? And then go through, and then they're gonna give you a ton of, you ever notice how people are really good at giving advice for other people, but oftentimes they're not following it themselves. Case in point, myself. <laughs> I'm always working on concepts. I'm, I'm Say I'm doing a concept for a client. And I'll be like, man, I'm having such a hard time with this concept. And then I look at it, I'm like, oh wait, I didn't draw it small first. I didn't draw it as a small sketch first like I taught everybody to do last week. I should probably be taking my own advice. But that's why, um, that's why you should really trust people because oftentimes the advice that they give others is actually really good. The advice that you give other people is really good. If you wanna figure out how to solve something in your life, you're having a problem, just imagine for a moment, do your best to imagine that your friend came to you with that exact problem and asked you, what the heck can I do? And then you might be surprised with taking that different mindset, how quickly you're able to come up with solutions. And it has to do with disassociation. It has to do with removing yourself from your personal problems, from your personal ego. And it's really interesting because we call it thick skin, but really what you're doing is you're almost, if you wanna think about it in a spiritual way, you're almost shedding your skin. You're shedding your skin and you're becoming almost so open that you're just able to receive everything. So instead of a hard rock, you have no, now become as the waves themselves. <laughs> Forming to every, every land mass that it comes in contact with, but not resisting it rather flowing around it, okay? So that's my analogy for the day, my spiritual analogy for the day. So um, yeah, become as the water. And the best way that I've found to be able to do that is to take yourself out of the picture. Take yourself out of the picture and think about the good of the product. Think of the good of the product, think of the good of the project. And you might be surprised you might just be surprised at how easy it is to listen to people, tear your work apart, tell you that it's no good, tell you you gotta start over again, all that stuff. All that stuff becomes so much easier uh, once you take that mindset. Oh, this looks pretty good, pretty good. It's cute, it's cute, I like it, I like it a lot. Now, I do want her neck to be just a little bit thicker. In fact, what I'm thinking about doing is I'll have this hair come down like this, but then I wanna see the, the largeness of her neck as it goes back here, because Tankana's buff, guys. Tankana's buff, she's tanking mobs. She's freaking taking out Kensei's. She is cr cross-platform, baby. Well, I play on PS4. I don't play on PC, even though I've heard it's way better on PC, but I'm a PS4 guy. Uh, at least until I get a new laptop. Maybe I'll pick up For Honor for the PC. Because I've heard the frame rate actually makes it a lot better. Um, but anyway, that's another conversation for never. So um, I want you guys to know that there are those three phases that you're going to go through. And most likely, most likely, you're probably in phase one where you're a little afraid. You're a little afraid of criticism from other people. You're a little bit afraid of, if you're working professionally, your boss. You're afraid of standing up to your boss. You're afraid of pushing back. Okay, let's talk about pushing back. Now, here is, okay, because there are points where you have to push back. That's probably the most important thing that I can talk to you guys about today, is how do you know when it's time to push back? How do you know when it's time to actually defend yourself and what's the proper way to do it? Okay, now, let's think about a couple ways that we could do this. Now, the only time that you really wanna push back is if, A, 
like I said before, the previous example or the previous example was it is somebody like a coworker or somebody uh, that is criticizing your work and you don't agree with them. And basically, the best way to say that is, I don't agree. But let's discuss that. Why do you feel that? You know, and there's nothing wrong with just saying no sometimes. I've talked to you guys about saying no. Oftentimes, the, mo the most common time where you'll have to defend yourself is with deadlines, okay? And that has to do with saying no. Your boss is gonna come up to you and say, hey, I want this thing done. We got this brand new project that we wanna do. And I want this to be done by next Thursday, right? And it's Wednesday. <laughs> and you need to be able to say no. You need to be able to say, I don't think so. But here's the way that you do it. And I've told you guys this before. And it has to do with what I was just talking about before. Is that keep their interest in mind. Keep the interest of the product in mind. And you don't say, no, I don't want to do that because I don't want to. No, you say, I don't want to do that, or I'm not comfortable committing to that, given the time that I have, because I want to be able to give you my best work. And with that time allotted, I'm not going to be able to. Now, if you're okay with me giving you a rush job, it's not going to be pretty, but if you're okay with that, and this absolutely needs to be done, then I can. But you have to know that the expectation is not going to be good. It's not gonna be good. It's gonna be passable, but barely passable, okay? And then, the <laughs> I just realized how low down her chest is. We, we need to fix this up. We need to fix this up. Tenkana, your chest is a little bit too large. A little bit too large. And this is actually gonna be pretty easy because we can actually just do this. We can just have this start a little bit higher and we can move this rib cage up Boom, easy people, easy, easy, love it, love it. Uh, let's see here, I kinda want one of her, I want one of these spike things on her arm, I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, but that's the best way that I found to say no to somebody about deadlines. Is say, look, I want the best for this project and given that time, it's not gonna be I'm not gonna be able to produce my best work for you. Um, and when you do that, your boss will appreciate it. He will truly appreciate it because he knows that you're not just standing up for yourself to like, to defend yourself, you're defending the product, you're defending the quality, and guess who, guess whose reputation is on the line when it comes to quality? Not just yours, but your boss's, okay? So therefore, they're gonna have an interest in that. They're gonna have an interest in that and they're gonna be grateful that you thought of that, okay? so. Uh, that's my best advice on that for defending yourself. Alrighty, people. This is looking quite good. I'm really happy with this. Really happy with this. I put a lot of detail into Tenkana here. In fact, her head is looking a little bit small. Maybe we can just lasso this entire thing, kind of size it up a little bit. I'll go ahead and do a little bit of detail on the mask on the other side because that is going to be really cool. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and cast some question catapults! And we got some great ones coming in! Great ones coming in! Alright, now... Of course, we like to talk about our questions. And... It's really funny how when I think about doing a show, oftentimes I, I must have like this spidey sense to think about what you guys are submitting on the MZ. By the way, yes, the MZ is shutting down and I am going to be having a new place where we can all congregate and submit new questions. So don't worry about that. Still in the works, but uh, I'll be sure to update you on that. Uh, but in the meantime, let's talk about this question coming in from Leonardo Bonini. I really like that name. And they're asking, hey, I'm so I'm new here and I'm a bit shy to post drawings or talk in forums any tips that I can use to break that barrier? Trying to enter in others' communities, uh, but I always find an excuse to, but I always find an excuse to, I'm guessing you meant not post your drawings, okay? Now, I'm gonna approach this in two different ways. Uh, Senor or Senorita Bonini. I'm gonna approach this in two different ways. And one is the positive way. Let's start with the positive way, because everybody likes the nice, happy positivity and positive messages. And I will say that you want to start posting your artwork because you never know. People are just, people might love you. People might just love, you have something special and unique to bring to this world. And by denying people that, 
you're just doing the world a disservice. So get out there and take action and just be ready for a bunch of good feelings. <laughs> okay, and now let's talk about the negative. What's gonna happen if you don't post your work? What's gonna happen if people don't know you exist? Well, do you wanna become a professional artist? Do you wanna do this for a living? Do you wanna just keep it a hobby? And there's nothing wrong with just keeping it a hobby. There's nothing wrong with being an amateur artist. But I've always told you guys is that from what I've learned in my 30 years of living, right? I still got a lot of, a lot of learning to do, but from what I've learned, it seems that the world rewards you for having skills that are hard to find. So, and the world needs to know that you actually have those skills. So if you hold those back and you don't start today, you don't start by building your thick skin, then what's gonna happen is you're finally gonna get up the courage to post one thing and someone's gonna say something bad about it, you're gonna take it away and you're gonna go hide forever under a rock or something. And there you will stay probably till the end of your days. And that's just not a good place to be. It's not a good place to be. And here's the other thing I'll say, is that for everybody who's not showing their work, there's plenty of other artists that are worse than you, that are. And guess who's gonna get the job? The artist that's not as good because they're the one that actually kept showing their work because they're the artist that actually showed their stuff, okay? <laughs> now, you can tell I'm very passionate about this because it's true. It's true, There's, it's so often that I see that artists that are not as good are oftentimes, they end up getting the job just because, and it's good on them. Maybe their art skill technically is not as good as another set artist that doesn't have as much exposure or isn't you know, marketing themselves quite as successfully. But guess what? It's not just about the art skill. Being social, being social or being willing to put yourself out there and hear negative and positive things and learning what to do with those is just as important of a skill as the art itself. And guess why I started this show? Guess why I started this show? It was because I was not a good public speaker. I was not a confident speaker. I didn't know how the heck to put my thoughts into words. I didn't know how to draw in front of people. I got scared of everything. And I decided one day that I was finally not gonna be okay with that. And that I want, and this was five years ago. This was five years ago. And look at me now. It's like, I still make tons of mistakes. I'm still nervous when I'm drawing. I'm still a little nervous when I get on the camera. I'm actually, I've gotten a lot better at that. That is probably the one thing that I can truly say that I've improved a lot on and I'm very proud of myself for. But as far as drawing and sketching, drawing in front of people, drawing live, showing mistakes, these are still things that I struggle with. But you know what? I'm glad that I'm doing it. I'm glad that I started this because now the work of five years is now beginning to show itself. It's beginning to show itself and then people come up to me and say, man, how do you do that? Man, I wish I could do that, but I'm just scared to start. I'm scared to start. And every day that they tell themselves that, they're falling further behind. They're falling further and further behind. Um, and I don't mean to say that like, it sounds grim and I, I want it to sound grim intentionally. It's not technically that bad. It, the solution is as simple as guys, get that thick skin. It's just get that thick skin. And I've shown you how to do it. I've shown you exactly how to do it. And it's by starting today. It's by posting your work. It's by getting ready for positive, negative feedback and learning how to not become a slave of it, right? Because you can become a slave of both positive as well as negative feedback. You can be trying to please everybody and altering your work. That's another thing I still struggle with. You know, oh, the, the new trend is this. Oh, I see a lot of other YouTubers doing this style of video. Maybe I should copy them. Maybe I should do that so that way I can expand my audience. But then there's another part of me that says, no, because that's not hitting the exact feeling that I want my show to be. Maybe yes, it's more entertaining, but, and, and there's definitely things that I can learn from that. I'm not dissing other YouTubers, dissing other art YouTubers that focus more on entertainment rather than education, you know, but, um, where's I going with that? <laughs> I'm not dissing them uh, because oftentimes those channels are way more successful than mine. But I'm staying true to my own values. And that is 
that I want to be judged on who is learning the most? Who is learning the most? Are they learning more from me? Or uh, is there another channel that's doing it better? I, basically what I'm trying to say is that I am focusing on, hopefully, education. And I hope you guys are getting a good, um, some good education out of this. As well as giving talks and saying things that sort of need to be said to artists. Things that I wish that would have been said to me a long time ago. So, and I like these teeth. These teeth look really silly. <laughs> Let's see if we can fix those. Because I want them to look less like rabbit. <laughs> they look like rabbit teeth. So let's see if we can kind of fix that. There we go. Maybe just make them a little more pointy. Good enough. Good enough. Um, but yeah, I wanted, when I started this show, I promised myself that I wanted to help other artists. I wanted to help them specifically by giving them education. And then later on down the line, I was like, hey, sometimes there's like some good things to be said. There's some, I can motivate people. I can change people's Understanding, I can maybe motivate somebody, right? Because I'm not, uh, trust me, I'm not so delusional to think that I can change your life, but maybe I can give you an idea that then you take and go do something yourself that will change your life. Because of course, it has to be you that does anything. I'm not gonna do anything for you. I'm sure there's tons of you out there that are like, yeah, I'm gonna post my art today. Now I heard this great talk from Ken Kiel. I need to build thicker skin and I'm starting now. And unfortunately, you're still not gonna do it. But maybe the second time you watch the show, you will. Maybe the third time you watch it, you will. Maybe you'll come back in a year and you might scroll across or you might stumble across this video and you'll realize that you put it off for a long time. And now maybe now you'll do it. But who knows? Ideally, I'd like everybody that watches this show to do it. And that's why I'm giving this talk today. Because I truly do care about you guys. I, I know it sounds really cheesy but you know, like somebody on YouTube could care about you, but I, I care about the art community in general. I care about people that wanna do this for a living because I know that it's not easy. I know that it's not easy. And I want to make it as, well, <laughs> I wanna make it easier, but I think I'm making it easier by telling you what you're going to, you're going to run into. I'm hoping to make it easier by telling you what to expect and how to deal with that. I hope you guys are getting some good value out of that. And if you are, then that's really all the gratification that I really ever needed. So, man, that's looking good. I'm liking that, that's cute. That's really cute. Let's throw a couple more values on that. And in the meantime, I'm gonna take one more question and then we're gonna end today's show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm feeling good today, by the way. I can feel my energy. My energy is on point today. Uh, okay, and this is a great final question coming in from Azura. And they're asking, what was the deciding factor with switching from animation to concept art? Because I've told you guys before, I've had an interest in animation, as well as video game concept art. And what was the deciding factor that kind of made me jump the ship, jump ship and kind of change my course forever? <laughs> I mean, I'm still into animation and I, there are times where I'm like, man, sometimes I wish I would have just continued doing animation because I look at all the cartoons and just short uh, films that are being created on YouTube and they're so good. They're so good. And they get tons of views and it's just great marketing for whatever they make it for. And I'm like, man, I really should have stuck with that animation thing, you know? <laughs> There's days where I think about that. But um, what was the deciding factor? I think what really did it for me was that as much as I love animation, I have the greatest respect for those guys because it's, it's literally the art of drawing thousands of drawings of the same thing over and over and over again. And I just maybe subconsciously realized down the line that I did not have the attention span to do that. <laughs> I didn't have the attention span to actually devote to drawing the same character because sure enough, as soon as I finish this drawing, I'll have an idea for another. I wanna do something different. I want variety. I want something that's unique. I wanna do something that I've never done before. So um, that and, you know, just falling in love with the Blizzard games, the art of Samwise Didier, the art director of Blizzard. You know, just seeing stuff like that just got me so excited about thinking about, man. And I just love video games, of course. So I was like, man, I don't wanna make video games. I, I wanna do this stuff for a living. And just over time, I just drew what I liked. And most of the time I was playing video games. So I just drew pictures of video games. 
and we had ourselves a merry, merry time with that. And I am happy. Looking back, I truly think that I made the right decision. And here's the other thing. Just because you decide to go one way doesn't mean you can't go another. I mean, some of you have been on my Instagram. You've seen a couple of the other, you know, subtle anime or like simple animations that I've done for Made of Metal, stuff like that. So it's never too late to just learn another skill. And that's the other thing. That's what I want to end today's show on. Is that some people are delaying building thicker skin. Some people are delaying putting their work out there because they feel it's too late. Because they feel that they're too old. And I just want to... <laughs> I want to think about the right way to say this. I want to have you just take a moment to think about how crazy it is that you feel like you're already late. And so your solution is to become even later. Okay? Think about that for a moment. What are you actually trying to accomplish by saying that I've waited too long, I'm a little late to the game, so my solution is to just keep procrastinating? It doesn't make any sense, guys. It doesn't make any sense. And I know that you're afraid that you're going to fail. And trust me, all of us do. There are plenty of times where I failed when I was getting ready to, when I was trying to work it right. You think that I just got out of high school, didn't go to college, and now all of a sudden I was like, Hey, oh, wow, Riot Games? Here, let me just submit my portfolio and you guys are just gonna love me and everything's gonna, no, no, screw that. Let, let's go straight to Blizzard. Blizzard, I'm out of high school. You wanna hire me? <laughs> I did all this fan art, right? But I sucked, right? <laughs> I failed then. I failed when I was 16. I started failing. I started failing really early. And that's what you gotta do. Whether you're young or you're old, you got to get started on your failures and just get excited. Probably the biggest changing factor in my life was learning how to look at failure. And I know that you guys see this plenty of times. You guys have heard it many times, but I'm just here to kind of rehash it, rehash it in a different way. And that is that not only do I want you to get used to failing, but I want you to get comfortable with going over it, right? Going over it and really looking at why you failed, why you failed. And a good example is in For Honor. You know how many times I've gotten ticked off at this game to the point where I've shut it off or thought about chucking the disc out the window? Plenty of times. And it's because, oh, here's, here's another bit of uh, advice that I'll give to you. The point that you find that you get the most angry is when you feel that you've lost control. Okay, and this is, this is what I'm gonna end on. The point where you get the most angry is when you feel that you've lost control. And that is why I want to stress to you guys that you learn to not lose control. And, and let, me, let me better sum that up. Um, the point where you lose yourself is when you feel like there was nothing you could have done. You don't understand what's happening. And that's why it is imperative that you watch your failures. You, whether it's in a game, if you can save the replay, or if it's in life. I want you guys to be asking yourself constantly, why did this drawing, why was this drawing not successful? Why did this painting fail? Why did it succeed? And I want you to be looking at both of those things. I want you to be looking at your successes and your failures and I want you to study them very closely. And then what I want you to do is I want you to find someone who did it right and I want you to study them and then I want you to steal from them. I want you to steal what they're doing right and put it into your own works. And I've done a whole nother tutorial on that as well. Might as well point you over to that. <laughs> Go check it out, people. Go check it out and you'll have yourselves a good time with that. All right, and I think we're gonna end that. We're gonna end it there, people. I'm liking this, this is cute. Tankana is looking very cute. Ooh, that was a nice little, nice little addition there. All right. Oh, and I, I knew we said we were going to do like a headdress thing. Uh, let's do it real quick. Why not? And then we're going to end today's show. Man, I'm really happy with how today went. Um, so let's see. I want it to look Viking-y. So I know this is just a terrible generalization of Viking culture, but I'm just going to put some horns on there. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I kind of want it to look like a crown sort of as well. So we'll have some like that. Maybe have some spikes that go out the back as well. Hey, that's cool. That's pretty cool. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and end today's show. So thank you guys so much for joining me on YouTube about or learning about thick skin. Hope you guys learned a good, um, I hope this was a bit of a pep talk for you, but also I really want to load it with actual practical advice and things that you can expect along your journey. Just to sum it up, stage one, hermit crab, we've all been there. Don't hide in your shell. Come on out. Eventually you're going to get, and, and then expect to be attacked and freaking punched and stomped and everything, like all the terrible things that you can imagine happening to your art are probably gonna happen. And eventually you're gonna get ticked off and you're gonna lash out at people. You're gonna finally learn that, oh my gosh, I actually have a voice, I can actually talk. And then you're gonna learn to control that voice. And then finally, you're gonna learn that, hey, I actually don't really need to defend myself so much, but rather I need to put my priorities on my team. I need to be, put my priorities on the product that I'm trying to create. And I need to bring my best work to that. And as you do that, ladies and gentlemen, you'll become a true professional artist. You'll become a true, confident, amazing person that people want to have on their team, that people look forward to meeting, look forward to talking to, and uh, having be a part of their dreams. All right? So you guys take that and go run with it. Have some fun. Rewatch the episode. Watch this a year later. Have some fun with that. And uh, yeah, we're going to end it. So thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Keenan Lafferty. I'll see you guys next week. Last thing, oh yeah, and we're going to do Lovely Lane. Don't think I forgot about that. Last thing I will say is that if you want to download this PSD, just click up here. It'll take you over to Patreon where you can not only download this PSD, but all the other PSDs from the past. And of course, support the show. Never, it's never, um... <laughs> you guys have supported this show in so many ways. Monetarily is literally just the cherry on top. It's never expected. But I truly do appreciate you guys being helpful and, and being willing to help me make this into a business. And I'm glad that you guys, most important thing is that you guys have been getting some good value from the show. So, yeah, that is going to end it. So let's go ahead and pull up the lovely lane, people, and then let's get on out of here. And uh, to get to the lovely lane, of course, you just want to head on over to tinyurl slash Art. Come on down here, click on this link, see all, make sure you're on PC. I don't think this works on tablets. But if you click here, you will indeed be dazzled by the amazing pieces that have come in. Oh, don't want to go that fast. And thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys next week. Until then, take care. It works! Thank you. I saw that one. I saw that one. This is a little bit of a longer, a little bit of a longer love lane because I was gone for a week. So I might as well just stay here for a second, talk about it. Is that Fio? Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Thank you for submitting that. That made my day. I feel bad because that fu futa Futara? I keep confusing her with an inkling. She looks like an inkling. But I know my Persona 5 now. I've been edumacated. All right, I think that catches us up. All righty, people, you take care. See you next time.